What's going on everybody? My name is Josie and with the end of the year coming soon, I am going to be giving you guys a lot of my top 10 best and worst of 2022. We're going to be going through horror films, films that disappointed me, surprised me, and then we're going to be topping it off with the top 10 best and worst films of 2022. Starting off the top 10 list is going to be the top 10 best horror films of 2022. This has been a wonderful year for horror and there were a lot of horror films that I did not get a chance to check out. So we're just going to be getting into the ones that I did see. Now before I get into my ranking I want to know what are your top 10 best horror films of this year. I want to know what you guys liked this year so go ahead and drop those thoughts in the comments below and if you like this video do me a favor click that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on more videos like this click that bell notification so you get notified every single time that a video pops up and so with that out of the way let's go ahead and get started with the top 10 best horror films of 2022 coming in at number 10 is a movie that surprised me and that is Pearl. I was not a big fan of X. There were a lot of things that I really did enjoy, but overall I did not like it. I think it was a little bit more style or substance. And with Pearl, I wasn't all that excited for this film, mostly because I really didn't enjoy X. Not only did it make me change my perspective on Pearl in X, also played by Mia Goth, but there was just a lot of creative things they did with this film by going into the Technicolor and they actually did a little bit more to improve this character because in X it just felt like a grouchy old lady. But once you see Pearl and X back to back, it gives you a little bit more perspective as to who this character is and what she is longing for. So coming in at number 9 is Studio 666, a movie that I was really excited about. I'm not the biggest fan of the Foo Fighters. I really enjoy a lot of their music, but when the trailer first arrived, I didn't know what to make out of this movie. It could have gone into a really awful way or it would have been a really fun time. And it was the latter for me. I thought this movie was a lot of fun. What they were able to do with this film is not take this film seriously. They knew exactly what kind of film they were going to make and they set out to have such a lot of fun with this film. It was funny, it was gory. This movie made me want to have other rock stars have this type of film come out because it was just an unexpected surprise. It delighted me to no end and it almost became one of my favorite films of 2022. Coming in at number 8 is Orphan Kill. I had a lot of trepidation when it came to this film. Mostly because when you have the original film with Isabel Furman as a little girl trying to be an adult, spoiler alert, not only was that a great twist, but one of my concerns about this film in particular, how are they going to make Isabel Furman look like a little girl since she is an adult now and it's been about 13 years? But boy, did this movie surprise me. What they did with Isabel Furman in making her look like a little girl, I thought they did the very creative things and it was almost unnoticeable. The only time that it was actually noticeable was on her face. I don't think they did a lot of makeup to really hide her age in this film. But taking that gripe aside, there were a lot of twists and turns with this film. I thought it was a lot of fun. Could have gone in such a cliched way, but making Julia Stiles have that turn, I thought that's what made this film a lot of fun because without that turn, it would just be another prequel. But when you have that turn and you have so many twists and turns here and there, I thought that worked very well and it was a very creative film that I really enjoyed this year. Coming in at number 7 is a big surprise and that is The Retaliators. This was a film I didn't really know anything about. The only thing I knew about this film is the fact that we had that Papa Roach had a song on this film and the trailer looked fun to a degree. They showed this film in theaters for one night and I just came out with a big surprise. Is there a lot of problems with this film? Absolutely. Is it perfect? Nope. But when I came out of this film, I had a big smile on my face because I thought this movie was a lot of fun and it was a very big surprise. It's not a film that a lot of people really know about, but there were just a lot of creative stuff. It did feel like it was a mixture between Evil Dead and Seven, and that is something that I really enjoyed about this film. The soundtrack is fantastic, even though it is just a big compilation of great songs that you've heard from a lot of rock stars, but overall, my overall excitement for this film actually paid off. 
Coming in at number 6, I have a big surprise and it's probably going to be ranked higher for a lot of people. That is Scream 5 or Scream 2022. This movie, even though it is creative to a degree, it is the same things that we've seen before. What they did great with Scream 4 was try to appeal to a new generation. And even though this is the same film that we've seen for 4 films now, almost 6, this movie was a lot of fun. You had the introduction of Jenna Ortega and Melissa Barrera in this film. And you also had a great cast here that you really wanted to see who was going to get picked off. Who was the killer? One of the biggest surprises that I had with this film and one of the biggest surprises that I had this year was the fact that they actually killed off Dewey Riley. One of my favorite characters of all time and they had the balls, the should I say testicular fortitude to actually kill him on screen. That was a very shocking death and I really enjoyed that. This movie was a lot of fun. It came out earlier in the year but what they did was have some creative things here and there and I really enjoyed a lot of these characters. I'm really excited to see what they're going to be doing with Scream 6. Coming in at number 5 came out earlier in the year as well and that is The Cursed. There is something scary about the things that you cannot see and this movie did it well. You barely see the werewolf in this movie. It mostly is a character study to a degree and I think that will turn off a lot of people but for me I really enjoyed this. The performances in this film were fantastic. There were some great scary effects that I really enjoyed but mostly was how much time they spent hiding the werewolf mostly because that is where the scariness of this film comes out. It's not a pure horror film but to me I kind of see this as 2022's The Witch. This movie was terrifying and not seeing the werewolf in this film ripping the limbs of people I thought it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed this to a great degree. Coming in at number 4 is an indie hit that just barely came out about a month ago. That is Soft and Quiet. I didn't know anything about this film. I just saw that it was playing at a theater, theater near me. I didn't feel like going out to the theater to check this film out because I read the synopsis and I think it would have been a heavy film for me to sit in theaters for. So I just popped it on VOD and boy did this movie surprise me. I know this movie is probably going to be very divisive among those that have actually seen it but to me this movie was just rageful. The one shot style approach that they took with this film was fantastic. This is the movie that Karen tried to be and failed in so many ways. This movie succeeded in getting you invested in hating these women. The last 30 minutes of this film are so heavy handed that it makes you want to gasp for air. This movie surprised me. This movie came out of nowhere and absolutely shocked me. I was not prepared to see how anxious this movie was going to make me and how chilling it was to me personally. It's not one that you want to watch multiple times. It's actually going to be a one and done for me just because of the heaviness that we had with this film. But overall this movie was really surprising and I think it knocked it out of the park in so many ways. Coming in at number three is my last indie hit and it just barely came out a couple of weeks ago. That is The Harbinger. Talk about a movie that is taking place during the peak of the pandemic and we've had a couple of pandemic films come out. This was one of the better ones and I really enjoyed this film. There is something very thought provoking about this movie. Not just about what life means and what it means to be forgotten. But what would happen if you actually never existed. That is something that it took me a while to appreciate. The more that I thought about this film, the more that it climbed up to being one of my favorite horror films of 2022. This movie was really a movie that came out of nowhere for me just like Soft and Quiet and with The Retaliators. This movie was a movie that I just popped on VOD and I was just blown away. From the moment this movie starts it actually shocks you and really surprises you. There is a lot of scary images in this film and a couple of great jump scares done well that I was not expecting to have in this film and it was just one of the best films that not only gives you thought provoking things about life 
but there were some great jump scares here and there. The acting was all right, but most of the dialogue was not the best, but for me, this was one of the biggest surprises of the year. Coming in at number two, talk about another surprise, Terrifier 2. I watched the first Terrifier about a week before this film came out, and I was just surprised by how bloody and gnarly it was. I really enjoyed that first film, so I was really excited, even though I was not waiting almost seven years for another for another Terrifier film. But boy, I went to a packed house and even though my theater experience with this film wasn't the best this movie surprised me at how gory and gnarly this film is from beginning to end there is non-stop blood guts and gore once you think a character is dead art the clown says you know what i'm just going to make sure that they're actually dead and there is one scene that is overkill and one scene that i had to look away if you've seen the movie you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. But this movie was a lot of fun. Lauren Lavera was a big surprise. She is probably going to be a up and comer that I'm going to be looking forward to because she absolutely knocked it out of the park. Is this movie way too long? Absolutely. Did I stay around for the post credit scene? Absolutely not because I didn't know there was a post credit scene until I walked back into the theater because I forgot my AirPods. But aside from that, I really enjoyed this movie. It was a lot of fun. Art the Clown is definitely going to be a horror icon for years to come. But coming in at number one is Barbarian. Talk about a movie that surprised the living hell out of me. When I first saw the trailer, I thought I knew exactly what kind of film I was getting. And when I sat my ass down for about, what, 90 minutes? This movie took so many twists and turns that I was not expecting that it just shot up to being my number one horror film of 2022. This movie was a lot of fun. It goes in directions that you did not expect it to go, especially when Justin Long is in the film. And that tape measuring scene, wow. Did I laugh my ass off for 20 minutes that once it got back to the scary parts, it was hard for me to contain my laughter and I felt bad for everybody that was in that auditorium with me. I had to give props to the marketing department because they did not give anything away about this film. And I absolutely loved it. Not only was I surprised, but I had a lot of fun coming out of this movie. I know it's probably going to be divisive amongst a lot of people, but for me personally, this was the best horror film of 2022. I really enjoyed this film. But those aren't my top 10 best horror films of 2022. What are your guys' if you made it this far? Go ahead and drop those thoughts in the comments below. And if you did make it this far, I have links for mostly all of the films on this list that I have reviewed. I think the only one that I did not review was uh Studio 666, but I will be dropping the links for all nine films that I have on this list, and hopefully you guys will check out those videos. Also, one last time, if you like this video and want to see more, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on more, because content like this can only be made possible by viewers like you. So for the last time, my name is Josie, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.